Hi, my name is Jared Gross and I've made this video in order to help educate you on the different support structures used for 3D printed buildings in concrete. Not all structures are able to support themselves with just concrete, like these arches done by Fenta Additive Manufacturing. I've made a separate video generalizing some of the concepts behind the material used for 3D printed concrete, but with so many projects using other forms of structural support, I figured I should touch on that as well. The distinction should be made between projects where printed concrete is a structural component of a building versus decorative use cases like a facade. Here you can see a map of projects that are structurally dependent on printed concrete. The resulting catalog consists of 22 structural DFC projects. Uh, most of the application uh, refers to buildings, uh, houses or offices, but also uh, bridge structures, components or architectural structures. The most frequent uh, technology employed is the layered extrusion. Traditionally, concrete is poured over tied rebar or tight wire. This is done because on its own, concrete is very strong in compression, but relatively weak in tension. There are various ways strength and tension can be achieved. Sometimes you will see material like rebar between the inner and outer layer of the wall. In warm or cold climates, you may want to avoid anything that would allow thermal bridging to maintain the insulatory properties of the building. One method of doing this is by simply including steel fibers in the mixture. When you add steel fibers to concrete meant to be printed, it tends to align itself in the direction of the extrusion with the highest strength parallel to the extruder. In other directions, the strength was comparable to steel fibers in a concrete mold, but the alignment of the fibers from the printer gives it considerably more strength. Um, with some amount of randomness, as indicated on the right-hand side, it turns out that both concepts have been supported depending on the details of the 3D printing process. For example, on the left, uh, tensile stress strain curves clearly shows that the 3D printed specimens have higher strength as well as higher ductility compared to the cast specimens made of the same material. Another separate study measured the impact of steel links in the print, but that method only resulted in increased strength after a fracture, which is a big issue. Even with the confidence it won't fall down, people will not be accepting of noticeable cracks in their walls. The next step that he takes, and he takes that step together with a PhD student, Lauri Haas, that you met before in this conference, uh, working on the perpendicular direction. So that's reinforcing layer by layer perpendicular to the layers. Steel type screw reinforcement can be placed in the fresh mold, yielding a strong bond and increased in flexural strength perpendicular to the screw. You can see here what the screw looks like inside of the concrete and how it bonds into the mix before it is hardened, resulting in a strong connection. Textile reinforced concrete has already been proven in real world situations. So this study attempted a similar concept applied to 3D printing called continuous fiber reinforcement. A strand is extruded with the concrete so that there is a continuous string within the printed concrete. Yes, Jimmy, I will address the issue of reinforcement. Um, and we already addressed it a long time ago. Sishan uh, Ahmed, um, I introduced him earlier during this, uh, this, uh, this talk, developed this tool eh, to embed the reinforcement wires immediately during the print process. Um, but that's one, eh? Dev uh, making the tool is step one. But then the next step, of course, is to go further in this field and investigate the true meaning of the reinforcement systems like that for 3D printed concrete from a structural perspective. And that's the research field of uh, Freek Bos, um, looking after the uh, structural properties of reinforcement. And of course, you have to combine that again with the material, because one comes with the, with, with the other. So the complexity is here again. 
And his research work is on finding out what the true meaning uh, of, of reinforcement systems like this is in terms of bond between concrete and steel. Um, it, was, it started with something like just confinement uh, and is now developing towards things like real bending structures where the reinforcement needs to be needs to have a good bond with, uh, with the concrete, as you can see on the picture here, of another idea of working on reinforcement. But, okay, we can argue whether this is reinforcement or an improvement of the material, of course, is the, uh, the introduction uh, in, uh, to introduce fibers into your matrix. The picture on the right-hand side, uh, an old picture from uh, the work of Zishan that he did uh, embedding the fibers in the structure. Uh, is now being followed up by uh, Karsten Neffs, uh, another PhD student that you have seen here on the stage during the conference already. And he's working now on uh, totally different types of, uh, of fiber reinforced concrete, uh, the more the ECC materials, where not only the fiber orientation matters, but where also the fiber shapes matters because they're not straight anymore. And what we always want to do, and I told you that in the beginning, tr try to do experimental research, do labor uh, laboratory research, at the same time make numerical models and have that data uh, AI tool available. And he is, for instance, here using an AI tool to get grip on the image capturing and making models from that using neural networks to create these structures, as you can see here. And this is one of the examples of the numerical models that we use. This is just an example of one fiber being pulled out of, uh, of, of concrete uh, using cohesive zone modeling. And that's something that, uh, to my uh, uh, yeah, pleasure, I saw during this uh, uh, conference as well from multiple authors working on issues uh, like this. And of course, we are very interested in the hardened property of structures and whether the printed 3D structure would be able to have structural integrity without heavily depending on steel reinforcements. It certainly would be much easier to just use a material that doesn't require any type of steel support being added in after printing. If you do require some kind of steel support, it would be wise to automate that process as this technology progresses into the future, I'm sure we'll see an evolution of the methods people use to increase the structural integrity of their projects and decrease the total amount of material and resources used to build it. Next week, I've got a great video coming out that I'm sure you'll enjoy, so be sure to subscribe to my channel.